call it luck, call it whatever you want, is that George Kittle and Brandon Ayuk and Debo Samuel are on the field together. It's amazing. It's like you assign players, you draft players, you develop players. You want your best players on the field. It makes a difference when they are. And it does feel like a different team with those three guys consistently on the field for the 49ers. Well, I mean, it was easily his best game of the season statistically. He had seven catches for 85 yards. Like, the guys look really good the last couple weeks. Just moving around, catching the ball, explosion, his athleticism, his ability to make shit happen with the ball. And Like, Brandon Ayuk is a big-time talent. Like, it's one of those things, and for a while we were arguing back and forth, not necessarily me and you, but just people. Is Ayuk, how good is he? Is this the next Pettis? Like, he has nothing in common with Dante Pettis, right? He's a legit talent. Now, for whatever reason, not on the same page as the coaching staff, but like, you know, George Kittle is an all-pro level talent. Like, I'm not saying he's going to be an all-pro this year because he's missed games, but he would start for every team in the league. Like, even Andy Reid would use two tight end sets, right? He's that special of a guy. Debo Samuel is having a career season and is a star. But Brandon Ayuk, when you watch him with those guys, you're like, yeah, he belongs. Like, it's just, he's one of those three, right? Now, I'm not saying he's as good as Debo or as impactful as George, but he's fucking good. And so when you get this guy who feels like he's, I don't know if it's confidence back, if just like he feels like the coaching staff believes in him, whatever. Maybe they're just throwing in the ball more. But, guy, he had seven targets, today, seven catches. Like, it's efficient. Like, Debo now has established himself. George has been a, was the highest paid tight end last year, right? I mean, this is, but you add him to the mix, with we know they'll just find running backs that they're in pretty good shape. We wondered what the hell they were up to with Ayuk. It was weird. You have to admit it. It was very weird. I mean, we talked about it a lot. And uh, what made it harder is the sort of cloudy language around him. And I don't know who deserves the credit. Um, I start with him because he was the guy that they were saying, suggesting little things, little hints just needed to be what practicing harder is GPS numbers, uh, more locked in, whatever it was, maybe it wasn't totally healthy. Feels but, like they liked him. They were mad at him, but still liked him. So didn't totally crush him. Right. We, yeah. I mean, first and foremost, wanted him to succeed and, you know, probably understood ripping your own player, at least this particular player. Maybe sometimes you send messages a certain way with guys. Well, well I don't know if it worked, but I give them credit for being, I guess, somewhat patient with him, but I give him credit for responding to public criticism. I mean, that's my point. They could have been more critical. They didn't share all the information that everybody wanted, but the bottom line is sometimes in-season adjustments are hard, especially for young players. And maybe it was as simple as he wasn't fully in shape because he had not been totally healthy, but he clearly made an in-season adjustment and responded. So I have to give the Niners some credit here. They handled it a certain way. We didn't all understand why they were handling it a certain way, and now Brandon Ayuk is playing well. So I think everybody involved on that side of things deserves some credit for this. And by the way, thankfully, it didn't – like he came back ready to roll when it still matters that he contributes. They were a little cloak and dagger with with it, right? It was just, it was just, yeah, a but little, I give them they, they, that yeah. way. They were operating what they thought was the best way to get him right. It wasn't so much we have to explain why he sucks and rip the guy so he looks bad and we look good. It was, they were trying to find a solution. Last four games, 20 catches, right? That's where you're heading in the right direction. Yeah. Four games, 20 catches, couple touchdowns, and just you see him and you go, yeah, that's what it's supposed to look like. And even in the Arizona game, when that fumble, that play was sweet, right? He goes up there like he's an NBA player, 50-inch vertical, catches it, gets on his feet, makes a guy miss, gets upfield. He looks sweet. <laughs> I thought today, like, Debo's going to get all the credit just because he's doing crazy shit. They just, I don't know. He switched positions <laughs> midseason? Like, it's one thing, like, they get, everyone hands the ball. Like, Robert Woods gets end-arounds. Odo Beckham has got end-arounds. Deshaun Jackson used to get end-arounds back when he was fast. That's not weird to give your playmakers the ball. You know, I remember an offensive coordinator once told me, he said, Andy Reid's best attribute is like people crush him for not running the ball. But if you look historically, he gets the ball to his running backs a lot. He would just argue, yeah, I don't give Shady McCoy 18 carries. I give him 11 carries and I throw him the ball nine times. Like I get him his touches. They just get Debo his touches, but he can line up in the backfield and just stand there like a running back, which is pretty unique. You know, I would say 
you know, Justin Jefferson ain't doing that. Devontae's not doing that. Like, it's a hard thing to do. And he looks pretty natural doing it. That Ayuk is a true wide receiver, and he's starting to just, pl- like, make switch, switch it happen just on a slant route and get an extra five yards. He's tough. He makes contested catches. You notice today, like, I'd even say over the last three or four weeks, he's made catches in traffic. Ball yeah. skills are really, really good. You know, that's... He catches the ball away from his body. It's not like he's a body catcher because he's not the biggest guy, but it doesn't have to be perfect. He can jump. Obviously, once the ball's in his hand, he's really fast. He's a big-time talent. You know, I don't know if he's ever going to be like Justin Jefferson or whatever, but you can't convince me that he can't be a 80-90 catch guy. Well, you go back to the beginning of the season, we thought this was going to be one of the best combinations of receivers in the league because we thought, and I I projected what they would need from him was – Somewhere around 75-plus catches. Guy, 20 catches. Maybe this isn't updated because it says he has 22 catches. He had seven today. I don't know. Who are you talking about? Yeah, Debo or Ayuk? It's not updated. So he has he has 29 catches now in the season. He had 22 coming in today. Yeah, not se- great. He had but, seven today. But he, yeah, but he maybe just, the pace. He, yeah, you start having six to seven to eight catches a game. You get up to, oh, by the end of the season, he has 60, right? Yeah. They have seven yeah. games left if he averages – What's five times seven? That thirty-five. You're already at you sixty catches. That's fine. Yeah. Yep. Given the way, like you said, he started. I mean, guy, he had through the first four games, he had one, five, six. I mean, he had eight catches through the first month of the season. <laughs> that was a little weird. Averaging two catches a game. Bizarre. It was weird. Actually, eight. He had nine catches through the first five games, and he's got twenty cents. So it's. He's definitely trending in the right direction, which is a positive. Debo Samuel had eight carries in the game. He had 11 carries coming in. So he has 19 catches now on the season, okay? In his first two years, he had 22 catches, uh, 22 carries, excuse me. Debo has 19 carries on the season. He had 22 carries in the first two years. I'd be curious how many of those came from the running back spot and weren't just, you know, end arounds. Three, maybe? I would guess he had a lot of – it felt like he had a lot of end-around play, right? Honestly, if you had asked me how many end-arounds he had in the first two years of his career, I would have guessed more than 22. It felt like he lined up early on a lot like uh, the wing T offense, you know, when the guys like lined up over the tight end and kind of comes use check kind of – yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's that's where 19 no. lines up sometimes. I mean, I don't I don't love the idea of Debo Samuel getting eight carries a game for the rest of the season, but I, – I, I don't hate it because when you I watch don't. him, it feels like he's gotten a little smarter with the ball in his hands, doesn't it? Like it doesn't feel like he's well, quite it, lowering his shoulder. He's getting down. Like I feel like he's playing pretty intelligently. I think he gets in actually lower impact collisions from the running back spot than he does when he's on an end around. You know. Well, do you know who gets in the highest? It's great vision. I mean, I'll tell you who gets in the highest impact plays is eighty five. Catch on and out, throws the corner off, sees three DBs, and goes, "I'm coming at all three of you, motherfuckers." Lowers his shoulder, and it's just a huge collision like that. I respect it. In a 24-point game with four minutes left in Jacksonville. <laughs> is there anyone that seeks contact with the ball in his hands like George? Of all the de- of all offensive skill guys in the league, he yearns for it. I don't think so, man. <laughs> I, I don't see how you could find anybody else. I I mean, did, did Zeke, Jerome Bettis look Zeke, for contact like this? I, I looked up. I saw Zeke limping off today, actually. Yeah, I don't know what his deal was today. I didn't yeah. all yeah anyway I no it's I I think if if we pull up it, the box score kind of matches what we saw Debo 9 touches Ayuk 7 touches I would say actually with Kittle it doesn't match four four touches and a touchdown it felt like he had and the beauty with Kittle he does more you know and then obviously they they try to get the ball to their other star on offense Trent Williams <laughs> Air Williams I mean I have been begging not I actually that's not right. I have not been begging. I've just been expecting. I thought it was going to happen against the football team last year as a fuck you to Dan Snyder, and it didn't happen. Uh, do you clearly, like do you like the way they did it? And listen, no, I'm not. I hate I'm it. not an, it's like Kyle. And again, I, I I don't even pretend to know more offensive football schematics than Kyle. But when you do line him up on the opposite side, he's like, I'm checking in as a tight end. Like, what do we think is going to happen? It's pretty obvious. Now I guess. To throw him the ball, he has to check in, correct? He has to declare eligible, but maybe you would get away with it a little they more if he's on the, the right other side, side of the offense. <laughs> who, 
Who's to the left? I don't know. Trent Williams, the best tackle in the football. Wait, he's lined up over the right tackle? What's going on? Even if you didn't catch the fact that he alerted the officials to the fact that he's eligible, you would notice him standing in the wrong place. So he gets double teamed. Do you appreciate Jimmy Jimmy G force feeding the ball? You got to. Jimmy told him, I'm throwing you the ball no matter who's open. (laughs) Yeah. I've just. Would you have gone lollipop instead of a little harder pass? It it wouldn't have mattered. Nothing was working. It wouldn't have worked. Well, you go back shoulder. You know, he had space behind let him. Let the route develop, maybe? Well, just let him fall down, you know? That's what happened, I thought. Yeah, but he threw he threw more of a straight line pass than a looper. Just hoping it would get through somebody's arms. Every big man thick six, every thick six, as I saw Jeff Schwartz calling it the other day, college football, it's how do, t- how do offensive linemen score touchdowns? It's usually like the misdirection. Everyone's flowing one way. Throw the guy back. leaks yeah, out. yeah. Like, yeah, so there's that one, like the way J.J. J.J. Watt scored his against the Raiders, right, kind of lined up, and then he just... Ran him a fade route, yeah. Then, like you said, you got the throwback play happens all the time. Oh, like a throwback to, screen type situation. I feel like they used to throw Vrabel, he would just play tight end and just run a route. I'd say that's what J.J. did, run a route. I don't know if I've ever seen a, the, someone try to throw a touchdown to an offensive lineman like that. And still nobody has, because that was... Not working. Honestly, when he went up, I was like, it's pretty well, – he coming down. Can you imagine him twisting an ankle or something? Well, you said it, and I you said it the other day, because we, we've anyone who's been listening for a while know we've talked about this for a while. You said the other day, I'm like, why wouldn't you do it? And you said, because he could get hurt. And I thought of that watching him get up because he fell hard. He's big. He falls hard. Would you hand on the ball? Too risky. I would just stop now entirely. I would yeah. <laughs> walk away from it. We tried. Sorry. Yeah. Maybe it'll be in the game plan when you're a free agent, week 17. But well, that's where I was thinking they did a couple things today. They ran a quarterback sneak on third and oh, two. And they got it pretty sorry. easy. That One other sweet. thing, John, but so reset that up in a second. I didn't even know this. I like to think I know some of the rules. When you're an offensive lineman that reports eligible, you can't be in the next play. You have to come out for a play. Oh, that's why he left? Yes. Oh, I was like, why is he why why did you put him in move him back tackle? Anyway, sorry, make the point. You're okay, so that's a pretty risky thing to do that with your start. You don't tackle. really do it unless it's gonna work. It's a fourth down, or or like third and it five. Doesn't really something. matter what's happening. Yeah, yeah, I get you. I I, I did you, not know you that. know you know rules better than me. I, I did not know that, that rule. It I, makes I no thought, sense. Like, I why is get he coming it. off the field? It's weird. Anyway, yeah, because I guess then you'd have to declare ineligible. I'm sorry, you were going to well because I, I I do and listen. I know football is just a numbers game in the in the blocking element of it. But for example, and I listen, it's it's irrelevant. But when you get to the, you know, within the two yard line, you do have a good left guard, a center, and definitely the best left tackle, a high paid tight end that can block, and an elite fullback. Like I, I, I think you just go, We know what we're doing, you guys know what we're doing, mono a mono, let's fucking roll. <laughs> and just and just roll. With Jeff Wilson or when Elijah Mitchell comes back and like when you're in just I can never fault, you know, because I would say offensive coordinators sometimes get crushed when they go for it. And it's like, oh, they ran it up the gut. No, just run it off the tackle and with your tight end. And just, you know, we're coming left. You guys are lined up left. We're just going to shove you. That to me is what, you know, I, I understand going up the gut when everyone lines up. I don't care if you have Jim Otto as your center. But when you kind of go off a tackle, you know, especially with what they can do with their tight end and their fullback, and they're, I, you know, Jeff Wilson and definitely when Elijah comes back are physical runners. I would do that. Or hell, even do like quarterback, like kind of. The, Jimmy's a good quarterback sneaker. The more I watch football, the more I like quarterback sneaks. Well, it worked. Clearly, they had a play today not lined up that if they had a certain gap open, he could check to a quarterback sneak at third and two. And it, he got it. Yeah. What do you think? He got three yards? Yeah. You know what? I love that. Because. I, the thing that baffles me, I was thinking about this Saturday. I had this offensive coordinator, Haberman, thought, watching college football. If you're ever in four-down territory, then uh, to me, and you're in third and short, or even if you're not in third and short, if you're in four-down territory, you should always, I think, have a quick snap sneak just as an option. Because I see it a lot where a team is third and three, they get a yard or they get stopped on a handoff. And then they stand around and everybody like, no, let's get back to the line of scrimmage. What are we going to do? Unless we're planning on running some Mr. If we're just, if you're going to run it on third and three, get stopped. And then you're going to turn around and hand it off again on fourth down. Then you should at least have the option to do a quick sneak at the line of scrimmage after you get stopped on third and short. Well, you know where the Niners benefit on that situation? 
they run a lot of toss plays. So you can never just sell out for like the yeah. A gap blitz because I would when I think Kyle Shanahan's favorite play, I either think outside zone or toss. And I would say this year, the toss crack or whatever fuck whatever they call it, like he's been doing that, right? And he has. I mean, that's he's run that play since he's been here, and that's part of having George Kittle and Kyle and uh, Kyle Uzcheck, right? Why do you toss the ball? I don't know because I have a sweet pass or run blocking tackles. Definitely now with McGlinchey out, at least one and a tight end and a fullback that can really block. I feel pretty comfortable comfortable making my running back pick a spot and he's going to get three or four yards. Though early in the game, you gave the Jags some credit. Like they they had scouted that play pretty well. Like they were there. Yeah. Yeah. They were overloading the kind of the corners. I want to get this comment in. This is from Rich, who says he grew up, he's from South Carolina. You should have seen Debo in high school. He said Debo's single game yards record got broken last month. He flew back and gave the kid a signed jersey to congratulate him. That's pretty cool. I don't think it's nothing that Debo and Trent Williams are buddies. Like they kind of gravitated toward each other. Like that's sometimes your wide receiver can just go down a Debo path. And listen, when the guy's good, there's nothing you can do about it, right? I do my core again. Like I, I enjoy running the ball. I'm a Pat Hill, even though you know Andy's much more of a passer. He has phys- he's an offensive lineman at his core. Likes physical guys. Like I love this type of football. I, I, I listen. I like elite wide receivers, but I like my guy just to be more toward Debo. I love Devontae Adams. Like when I think Devontae Adams, I think just Keenan Allen, just tough. You know. Yeah. Yeah. I could just depend on him and Debo. We didn't really know because he just kept – last year had the hamstring injuries. His rookie season, especially, remember down the stretch how awesome he was? I, I didn't think he was this good. I mean, I'll be honest. Like, this is pretty crazy to watch. Like, he is a dominant, dominant player right now, guy. Okay? Yeah, and I do think he has be- – I think him and – I think he Kyle is obviously using him a certain way. I think he's benefited from playing from Kyle for Kyle Shanahan as well. Oh, for sure. Um, but wouldn't he be good with, I mean, at his level he's at right now, he'd be kicking everyone's ab- ass. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but the creativity really benefits him, and and obviously he embraces it. Not everybody would want to embrace playing no. the way that he plays or, you know, positionally doing some of the different things that he does. I think back to when Kyle Juszczyk was on the podcast several in the off season, and he said Debo Samuel really benefited from having – he thought Debo benefited from having Emmanuel Sanders on the team in 2019. And he said, remember, for those of you that missed that interview – or don't remember it. Uh, he said uh, he was talking about how much he loved Ayuk. He was actually talking about Debo in the context of Ayuk. He was telling us how much he loved Ayuk, and that he thinks Ayuk just he would really benefit from a veteran receiver around him, in the way that Debo really benefited from having Emmanuel Sanders around. At some point, you know, who knows? I don't. Maybe one day we'll get the story. Maybe it was some Kittle. Maybe it was Sanu. Maybe it was watching Trent Sherfield. Maybe it was, you know, I don't know if, John, you know this, but Kyle Shanahan used to be a receiver in college. It gets, it's been mentioned on every broadcast for the last month for some reason. It's like Kyle is telling receiver stories in the production meeting. Have you noticed that? Every Everyone's like, you know, and they don't just say, like, Kyle was a receiver. They're like, you know, from his receiver roots, <laughs> as if, like, it's influenced the way he calls Well, got one thing they dropped today was like, you know, if you're going to be a receiver for Kyle, you got to block because he was a receiver. You mean just like a walk-on guy at Texas? Like, no, it's, he believes in blocking because his run scheme is a run-oriented thing. Like, <laughs> Chip Kelly was big on blocking. Why? Because Chip loved running the ball. Yes, I've been Lincoln. Being- what do you think Lincoln Riley preaches to his wide receivers when he's calling like outside zone runs? Block. I mean, it's, not, it's not like, hey guys, you know, back when I was 20 and I was 17th on the depth chart and Chris Sims was my roommate, we got matching tight ends. I blocked every day in practice. I know I with the scout team. Like, it's yeah. like, yeah, he wants his receivers to block for his baby, the offense. Right. Being his father's <laughs> son has more to do with that than the fact that he was he wasn't an air raid guy until he got to college. They act like he's Odo Beckham or something. It's, in Texas. Oh, I, it's, and it's, it's come up like four straight weeks. It's incredible. But I bet anyway, he would be a little embarrassed the way they talk about it. I don't know. It, it's, it makes me feel like he's in those production meetings. Like, and here's a picture of me after my. I feel like he wanted to be a quarterback more than a wide receiver. Totally. <laughs> yeah, I know. But anyway, I I think you know maybe it's been Debo that's had some. Maybe I I do wonder. One of the questions I would ask, if we were sitting with people who could give us the whole picture of what's happened with Ayuk, is is any of this Debo because. You're right. It's not an accident that when they line up in the home tunnel, it's Debo Samuel and Trent Williams side by side next to the boom box that's the size of a front door. 